Welcome to the last session of our ESPON seminar for today. I'm Nikos Lambropoulos, and I'm responsible for outreach and media activities at the ESPON AGTC. Today, our director, Viktor Sidarovsky, at the opening uh, session, said that the fundamental question of this uh, seminar is to understand what quality of life means and how we can measure it. Well, for communication, the fundamental question is how can we communicate these results in a way that it, no expert can understand? How can we make scientific evidence accessible to what we are calling the general public? And how can we make it appealing for the journalists that are our main multipliers and uh, they are our intermediates with the general public? We will discuss this with three communication experts, that they are all professionals and they are working many years in this field. So I will start with Natasha Birsky. She is a lifelong journalist and she's having worked for TV in Slovenia and for BBC in Washington. And is now co-founder of the independent media network, Metalist, right? Yes, Metalist, yeah. Okay. And uh, among others, she's working on a podcast that presents uh, research results to the general public. Also, yes, managing the team that is behind uh, some of the podcasts and also uh, anchoring some of them. Perfect. Thank you very much. And we have also with us Alessandra Boarini. She's also a journalist. And she specialized on EU affairs. She's based in Brussels and is working for ANSA, the Italian news agency, which is actually one of the biggest agencies in uh, Europe. And Alessandra is also a freelance contributor to different magazines and newspapers, such as uh, Il Venerdi. Yes. Right. And uh, also Il Manifesto and uh, others. And we have also John with us. You, you know John uh, already. He was our moderator for the whole day. And John is one of the most uh, known uh, bloggers on EU affairs. And he's also an expert uh, on communication and on social media. So this uh, session will work uh, as following. We will have three presentations. And each presentation will follow a short uh, debate uh, around the panelists. And we will answer also questions from, uh, uh, from the public if we have any. So I will immediately pass the floor to Natasha, and we start, and we're waiting to hear your presentation. Thank you very much. Thank you, Nikos, for inviting me and uh, for a lovely introduction. It's a pleasure being here with you, and hopefully to convey you some some interesting facts about how media works and uh, share some of my uh, experience in the field. So. When we were talking about the workshop, you asked me how can scientific results become interesting for news media and how can they be used on social media. So I've been working for most of my career in traditional media, um, in other uh, topics uh, but science, um, and, but I could still see that uh, those covering science were struggling a lot to get their news, uh, to get scientists in the main news, except for, you know, some catastrophes uh, or uh, events like we had for the past year and a half, almost two years, which is the cool. pandemic. But then, uh, when I was living in the United States, it was, it was years when the social media were born on the Facebook, Twitter and uh, LinkedIn and others. Uh, and you could see how the conversation is moving and how you have uh, other opportunity windows to present uh, what you're working on. Of course, uh, the social media is a big opportunity, but also, as you can see from uh, this slide, uh, it's not uh, without flaws, it's not without traps, uh, and it's, uh, again, as we have seen during the pandemic, it's sometimes difficult to, to explain or to get people to listen. But if you know how, how those pl platforms work, I mean, you can at, at least, you know, uh, manage how things are done or, or just do a better job by knowing it. So being for almost 25 years in the media, uh, what I came up with uh, was that uh, the main challenges that many, not only scientists, have with how to get in the media and how, how, how to do the social media is that they're having difficulties understanding how the media works. Not, not knowing not knowing uh, the differences between the TV, radio, press, the digital, and not uh, also getting any education at all as to how to present results, how to communicate with the media. So another problem or a challenge was uh, crafting the messages. Okay, we want to go or, or be in the media, but uh, why? What are you planning? What's your message? 
And then again, uh, that presents sometimes some problems with connecting with the audience. You know, scientists are talking in one language uh, and the general public uh, is talking in completely another language. And then you have journalists in the middle trying to uh, sort of, you know, translate it so that the general public would uh, understand what they are talking to. And then the presence in the social media or in the media in general, you know, uh, most or uh, I've seen through my career, a lot of them are having a Objections, objections over uh, why do I need to do this, uh, the media uh, won't present my story as I think it should be presented, and the social media, a lot of them were like, uh, why? And just a, a waste of time. Uh, things are changing, uh, and uh, many more, especially the younger generation, are aware of the opportunities that the social media is presenting. So understanding how the media works, uh, the criteria for publication is mostly the time component. You know, uh, if something is, have, if your research has to do with something that is uh, going on, you know, not only in real time but happening now, this today or this week, that uh, means that you. Um, that you have a better chance to get in the media. Then there is a relevancy. How relevant is what you're doing? How important? We are always also screening the, the social media. What are people talking about? What's the audience interest? And then, of course, if you have great visuals, meaning great photos or, or great video, then uh, it's like 100% you'll get uh, in the media uh, on TV. Absolutely, yes. Uh, the rest is a waste of time. Uh, I'm sorry to say that, but that, that's mainly how it works. Not uh, every time and not for everything, but mainly that's like the, the points that we go through uh, when uh, getting something in the media. Uh, for example, you see uh, the ship on, on this uh, slide is, uh, as uh, we have been following a few months ago, the ship in Suez Canal stuck. You know, and we, we heard a lot of uh, various informations about what's uh, on the ship, uh, what happened, and how big the ship is. You know, for the media or for the general public, it's always interesting to put things into perspective. It was like 400 meters long. That's in comparison with, uh, that's the center of Ljubljana, the capital of Slovenia, and the river is Ljubljanica River. Mm -hmm. So people, you know, oh, that's really big. Uh, <laughs> That's, I mean, that's what the general public likes. And when, when I was uh, screening uh, your web page, what I really liked was that you have, I'm not sure if that is all the time, but a featured map. And the featured map has to do with the energy. And, you know, there's a lot of talk about the energy flows and the energy challenges. So if you are having something that, you know, deals with the topic, that improves your chances uh, of, uh, of being published. And then crafting messages, you know, storytelling is very important. Okay, you have a result. What's your story? Uh, you know, people connect with stories and you need to know what your message is. Not, not only I want to get into the media, not knowing what I want to emphasize. Mm -hmm. You know, just one, two, three things. <clears throat> Being informative using facts and figures helps. Uh, with scientists, often there is a problem that... Um, they, they have a difficulty being, being short, being concise. Uh, they, they like to, and I understand everything, but you know, they talk for half an hour and then there is a nightly news and it's maybe 15, 20 seconds that is being used. And that, of course, um, makes them very angry. But if you know how the media works, you're going to have prepare, uh, prepare the message that will be 15, 20 minutes long, a minute, and then you know, a conversation of half an hour. Um, always scientists like to you know, talk about the methodology, uh, the, the sponsors. Uh, when they send me blogs, you have in, in the brackets you know, uh, this publication and that publication. The general public and the media is not totally not interested in that. Uh, you can still add that as, you know, added value, but don't focus on that. Uh, and uh, as I will uh, emphasize, get your visuals ready. Like having just uh, scrolling to your, to, through the, maybe it was the latest news or something, uh, under the unveiling the international, interregional trade flows between Spain, France and Portugal, the first five words, there is no official data. I mean, yes, that can be like out of 10 sentences, the 10th one. I mean, explaining or somewhere in the middle, but if your first message is, 
it, or first sentence is there is no official data, then why should I be interested? I mean, emphasizing something else. I'm sure there is something else, but just paying attention to these kind of things. And again, back to coloring the content. A couple of years ago, uh, I'm not sure, 2016 or 2014, something like that, uh, you know, the, the whole world and the media was talking about the, the size of the Rosetta's uh, comet uh, approaching uh, the, uh, the United States. It was a four kilometers in length, you know, and someone did uh, a comparison with the city of Los Angeles. You know, it, it, it's another perspective. It gets people interested clicking into the link and then maybe searching for some other news uh, or the sci uh, things that scientists are researching. Or we had like a couple of months ago, the Water Act referendum in Slovenia and a geographer for the page that I manage um, did uh, a research or just put things into perspective geographically. Uh, the um, slide, the picture the photo on the left shows the Slovenia, the darker sides are where the biggest majority of people voted for, for uh, against a referendum uh, or uh, against the Water Act that was proposed by the government. You know, and that is how people, you know, immediately see which parts of Slovenia uh, are more uh, inclined into support another or uh, one or the other side. On the right hand side, out of uh, a little less than 3000 voting places in Slovenia, there were 22 to where people actually voted for what the government proposed. And you see, it can immediately be seen. You know, you can explain that in two, three, five sentences. Enough is just one picture. And from uh, what I saw on, on your page, you had a lot of, a lot of that. So it's important to connect with, uh, with the audience using, you know, simple uh, language and avoiding uh, jargon, which is, I know, difficult for researchers and scientists, but that's like the, the, the apples and oranges uh, communication that I was mentioning uh, at the beginning. And just uh, quickly through the social media, you know, to succeed online, First, you have to be there. Uh, we journalists, at least that's the experience of uh, me and a lot of my colleagues, you search for, for, for scientists online, uh, you know, for those who, who are publishing, who are sharing interesting uh, news with us. And I um, have met so many interesting people that way, but you have to be there. And lastly, uh, you asked me to say a, a few things about podcasting. It's, um, you know, the audience for that is growing. I've been doing it for, for uh, eight years. Um, in terms of how to attract audiences, it's a couple of, of advices, uh, like publishing uh, regularly, replying to comments, um, you know, hashtag, uh, using hashtags and tagging. So, to an answer to your question at the beginning, how can we get the media uh, to report uh, on us and get into the social media? It's hard work, but it pays off. So, thank you very much. Thank, thank you, you very much, Natasha. Uh, I will give the floor to to the other uh, uh, panelists. But before this, uh, one thing that I wanted to ask you sure. is because it comes up. I mean, all these uh, uh, remarks are, of course. Uh, I mean, we try also to to explain mm -hmm. to scientists how they, they they should work. But uh, and it's useful for, for for them to to hear from a professional like mm -hmm. you that actually this is the way to to work. This is the way to mm -hmm. go forward. Uh, but the problem is that some sometimes the scientists say that in a few words they cannot really summarize what they what they're doing and uh, that they prefer to to stay outside of the of the game yeah. instead of uh, let's say playing it so how do we convince them yes yeah. <laughs> uh, well uh, taxpayers money is financing what they are doing. <laughs> so they should be able, that's a brutal that's one. A brutal <laughs> that's a brutal <laughs> one. <laughs> they, one thing is, I know that they have not been getting the training, they are afraid, yeah. they no, don't know the media, and they rather stay out of it. Mm -hmm. So we provide some trainings in that regard. Yeah. Uh, we have seen that with younger scientists, that's not an issue, or at least not as big of an issue as it is with uh, more senior scientists. Uh, another one is, I mean, they should be able to explain to a six-year-old what they are doing. Mm -hmm. You know, I know that not everything can be done that way. And another one, the brutal one from the beginning, I mean, you know, you, you have so many people asking, oh, we are uh, spending so much money for science, we don't need that. You need to explain 
to the general public why we need scientists researching pandemic, why uh, for like hundreds of issues. Mm -hmm. And uh, I know it's not an easy job, but uh, now more than ever, we need their voice in the public sphere. Indeed. <laughs> Thank you. Alessandra? Just a question and also a provocation. So <laughs> where is our job then? I mean, if scientists then uh, are able to communicate, so uh, our our job, our role in this story? Uh, well, if because he the, or the, the she, I understand the, the bridge, no? I understand, but we are not experts in the field. So uh, I believe that if they are trained in that field as well, uh, they can better describe, summarize as I can do who are not an expert in a certain field. Mm. I mean, they can, you know, step, uh, uh, they can make a step toward me yeah, yeah. as I can do to toward them. Uh, if he or she is talking uh, for half an hour in, in the language that I won't understand and the journalist, the, 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 the media rooms today, they don't have weeks to work on a story. They have mm -hmm. to produce like that. Yeah. And if you are not going to help me, then we're going to try to find someone who is going to That's true. be more. I mean, I, I totally understand, but uh, the, the uh, budgets of the media newsrooms and the number of journalists working on certain things are just not at the same number. I mean, before I went to work in the United States, which was in 2003, we had on a television, which was the most watched television in Slovenia, we had one uh, news show per day at mm -hmm. 7 p.m. for an hour. When I came back, we had less people, but doing four shows per day. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it, the dynamics change yeah. that way. <laughs> I mean... Yeah. Th that I, uh, I can say this n not as a science communicator, but I was forced to confront that exactly. as an expert on Brexit, among all oh, topics, yeah. by being the right person in the right place at the right time as a British person living in, living in Germany and being forced into a live TV debut literally mm -hmm. on the Brexit referendum night and then doing it every week after that for years. Um, and it was a very, to me, I think an interesting experience was it's actually a really interesting intellectual mm -hmm. task to take that degree of complexity and be able to boil it down to 30 seconds. Mm -hmm. Now, and I keep on having to ask myself that. What is an intellectually fair summary exactly. of something incredibly complicated? And I'm still fascinated by mm -hmm. that task. Now, then a good science communicator, in my view, is someone who is motivated by that. Right? Now, that's not for every person, don't get me wrong, but I think that's still something intellectually really, really fascinating to confront yourself with. And that's what then, particularly for television and radio, is, is absolutely what, uh, what can make compelling science communicate. Mm. And then, then there is another thing that I am seeing uh, more and more scientists being in a role of professional communicators, so being you know, yeah. hired by the media because they are better understanding it and you teach them just how, you know, talk in front of the camera, how to write pieces. Yeah. And th that is working really, really well. Another problem that usually comes up is that, because you, you said that time is very important. Yeah. But uh, scientific research takes a lot of time, really. So sometimes they cannot re really adjust to, to, to the reality that it goes really quickly, especially in the newsrooms, as you said. So that's another issue that uh, creates difficulty in connecting. Uh, yes and no. Uh, the research that they are working f uh, on is, you know, uh, hard work, it's evidence-based, and when things, I don't know, there is an earthquake and there has been a research into the, um, I don't know, uh, how the, the buildings in uh, Ljubljana uh, needs to be repaired because of this and that. And then you can bring mm. uh, out, uh, you know, yeah. a research like that. Uh, yeah. that. That is what I meant. Uh, with this, okay. yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, sure. thank you very much. Sure, thank you. So, another ah, another yes, question. Uh -huh. uh, <laughs> I d for me, this is the, the the first project of this kind with uh, with Espen. So I'm not used to the um, to the science communication. So, so I'm uh, I'm learning. Um, I had the impression that 
uh, there is a growing interest in uh, the communication in science, in scientific communications. So I would like to ask you if it's correct, these impressions, and why there is uh, uh, this uh, interest in... Uh uh, my experience shows that, yes, uh, it's a growing interest, uh, and especially in the past two years, we have seen that we need mm -hmm. scientists, and, and you mentioned Brexit, uh, another great example. It's not only, you know, uh, the uh, natural sciences, it's the social sciences, the humanities, uh, that uh, we need them. Uh, and they are better and better in communicating. Uh, they have, I know many of them, you know, their own YouTube channels, uh, writing blogs, their own uh, podcasts. It's, uh, uh, yeah, uh, definitely my... Uh, but why? Because the world is getting more complicated or because of, the, of the, this phenomenon, for example, of the fake news? Uh, you mean... Uh, sorry? Yeah, well, I, <laughs> I would argue that it's, it's partly as a result of a decreasing trust in political institutions, mm. uh, perhaps yeah. you kind of seek to compensate mm. uh, instead mm. by maybe going to experts directly. Now, that leads you somewhere into a strange yeah. political environment, but I think that's some of the motivation. Yeah, totally uh, good point. Thanks uh -huh. uh, for, for bringing it up, because the research shows, you know, you know when they're measuring uh, who people trust uh -huh. and the scientists come yeah. like Top three, oh, yeah. top five, the politicians, the media, also the journalists. We also yeah. have <laughs> 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 the, 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 pro the problem actually is that media is also de de decreasing. Yeah. In, yeah. In yeah. The same and terms. a lot of it is uh, yeah. it's our fault. So th then the problem is that the scientists cannot find really, you know, the place to, to express them, themselves well, the and present thing, the, the their The good work. thing is that uh, there is no, not only the traditional media out there, there are like many opportunities and you need to think out of the box, uh, look for, for other players. Yeah. And there are many more than there have been 10, 20 years ago. Yeah, very good. So okay. thank you very much. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> yeah, we need to move to the next to, to the next yeah, uh, presentation. So, uh, Alessandra, the okay. floor is yours. Okay. So thank you for uh, this debate, Nikos, uh, and uh, for the presentation. Uh, so we are running a project together, Ansa and uh, and Espon. Ansa is the is the the, the first and uh, most important uh, Italian press agency, uh, and since 1945 uh, we collect and. Uh, and distribute information on all existing platforms, so uh, through videos, photos, and uh, uh, and text. And uh, personally, I work in uh, in the desk uh, in uh, Brussels. Uh, so once I is cooperating with uh, uh, EU agencies and bodies in order to, uh, to 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 be the best information hub for the Italian media uh, for the Italian media environment. Uh, so our desk uh, in uh, in Brussels cover all the aspects of uh, the European Union activities uh, and uh, uh, ANSA has been granted with, uh, uh, with the funds by the EU institution for to, to, to carry out information uh, projects uh, within Italy. So we run lots of projects. So on, uh, uh, one of them is uh, uh, the, the, the one with ESPON that we manage, with, that we uh, run with uh, uh, PAP and AP, uh, DPA, uh, so the Polish and the, and the German press agency. Uh, but we have also we cooperate also with uh, DG Regio, uh, with uh, with the European Parliament, with the G Connect. We have uh, a project for uh, you know um, distribute information concerning the European Parliament and uh, the, the specifically the EU, uh, the European cohesion policy. Then we have have another project for uh, the, um, I'm sorry, um, with the, um, okay, uh, with the, um, um, with the G -co uh, Connect and also another one with, uh, concerning the, the, the migration because so, uh, the migration is a, a very, uh, a topic uh, very high on the agenda in Italy. Um, and then we have also uh, another project concerning the, the fake news uh, discovery uh, with uh, uh, with uh, with the uh, with the use of uh, of the 
the artificial intelligence. So uh, you asked me in for this presentation, uh, like to to explain the difference between a news agency and the media. Basically, the difference lies on uh, on the audience because the news media uh, mainly addresses to journalists and then indirectly to the general audience, while a media um, addresses directly the, the, the general audience, so uh, readers and radio listeners, etc. Uh, so basically, this is the, 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 the uh, let's say, the, the difference. Uh, but uh, let's go quickly to our, to, to, to our, uh, to the topic of the day, uh, of the debate, so how uh, to communicate research. So uh, for me, uh, the selection of topics is, is the most important part of the process. Um, uh, it, there is, uh, uh, in my opinion, in my very <laughs> little experience, uh, there is not a specific uh, rule to follow, but there is a specific uh, uh, aim to, to, to achieve, and this to anchor uh, the, 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 the study, the research study to, to a news. Because otherwise, uh, it's like uh, a theoretical story, and, uh, and uh, journalists are uh, concrete and brutal. Is, uh, <laughs> we can see, um, but also, <laughs> but uh, it's not only because um, this gives the, the opportunity to reach a, a wider audience, but it's also um, uh, the, the, uh, the the question is to. Uh, provide the general public with a background to the news. So it's a kind of uh, complete the news with uh, a background, with uh, a research. Um, and the, the, the question now is how? So um, uh, there are three elements that, in, in my opinion, we, we need to take into account. Uh, one is data and comparative analysis, and this is a very an added value of uh, of, uh, of the work of Espon. Uh, and then we have the geographic proximity, and then the political and media agenda. Uh, so, um, so uh, data first. Um, uh, data allow you, uh, you know, to provide a, a concrete measure uh, to to a certain phenomenon. So, uh, thus making. Uh, a study uh, more accessible and understandable to the to the audience. So in uh, in July, uh, we uh, several uh, EU countries experienced uh, some uh, severe floods, uh, causing hundreds of uh, of death in uh, Germany, Belgium, and Netherlands. Uh, so at the time, ANSA uh, published some of the main findings of Titan project. Uh, in particular, we focused on the impact of the climate change and uh, its dramatic effects such as the floods on our lives and our economies. So uh, basically this regard we started with the data um, in, the, in the period from uh, 1995 to uh, 2017 floods, storm droughts and earthquakes caused negative economic shocks in the EU with a resulting uh, drop in GDP causing almost Seven, uh, uh, 77 billion euros in damages. This, uh, this number, 77 billion uh, euros in damage, was retaken by all media in Italy, all media, because this number uh, was a completion of the of the news, you know, and uh, and uh, it gives you uh, a measure to the, of uh, uh, of the climate change. Um, so uh, we need a number, we need the data, we need a comparative analysis, and um, and. Uh, and uh, I want to uh, underline, uh, um, highlight once more that uh, this is uh, an added value of, uh, of the ESPON research to compare regions and countries in, uh, in Europe. Um, and then 
there are also other other tools uh, that consist of uh, searching for concrete cases mentioned in uh, in the project, uh, but they have they, they need to have certain features, certain certain requirements. First of all, the geographic uh, geographic proximity. So uh, here I would like to mention uh, an article that uh, we wrote about Bologna Milan high speed line. Uh, Ansa dedicated three articles to 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 this project to Imagine project. Uh, focusing on the um, uh, on the impact of uh, of this railway uh, on the e-commerce logistics, uh, the mobility, and the creative industry. So, especially in uh, halting uh, the brain drain, that is a huge problem in Italy. So, uh, these articles were not directly linked to a news, um, uh, such as it was in, uh, in the natural uh, disasters, but the area covered by the study uh, represents uh, one of the most important area from an, uh, an economic point of view in Italy, uh, the, the area of, of Milan and, uh, and Bologna. Uh, and then th also the topic of mobility of transport was quite high on the political and media agenda. Um, also because the Italian government has been investing a lot of money uh, from, the, from the recovery funds uh, to, to, to transports, uh, especially the high-speed railway, which is uh, a very divisive uh, topic in Italy as well. So, uh, so that is why, I mean, it, uh, it, it didn't come as a surprise that the Corriere della Sera uh, dedicated a wall page to Imagine, Imagine Project, uh, because the Corriere della Sera uh, is based in Milan, uh, so uh, they have a strong focus on economy, but they have also a strong focus on this area. So to the to, to Milan and and uh, and the region of uh, Lombardia. Um, so since um, Espon mainly provides with. Uh, regional analysis. Then, uh, uh, then we pushed. Basically, we, we prioritized uh, news with uh, a very local angle, and um, and we pushed Ansa shareholders' local papers network to pick up uh, Espo news. Um, and then uh, uh, I would like to uh, to mention another case, uh, the, the the case of Espo Metro. So um, in June, uh, basically. Um, the, the the newspapers, media, and politics were uh, debating a lot uh, the the issue of the, the national recovery and resilience plans. Um, so um, because the the European institution at that time were approving uh, the national plans, um, and uh, or at least the majority, um, and the and the and the research project Espon Metro. Uh, is not uh, focusing specifically on this uh, on this topic, uh, but in this case uh, it was uh, um, uh, it was uh, really important to talk to the stakeholders. Uh, one of these stakeholders was uh, from the uh, from the uh, metropolitan city of Turin, and uh, it basically we managed to combine the findings of the study with uh, the, the, the topic of the National Recovery Plan. So that was why um, uh, one, of the, uh, one of the main, uh, again, uh, Italian newspaper like La Stampa, uh, which is based in Turin, uh, retake the, the, the article concerning the, uh, the Espon, uh, Espon Metro. Uh, so, but then you, you need, you know, uh, to find, um, because in the Espon Metro didn't mention at all this uh, this topic of uh, uh, of the of the um, uh, national recovery and resilience plans uh, but uh, but they they focused on in general on the phenomenon of the metropolitan cities in Europe so we managed to combine these aspects you know it was an escamotage <laughs> to talk about also the findings of the of the um, of the project so um, the results um, 
so now uh, we have a strong uh, dissemination uh, through our our news network and also with uh, the API and uh, with also PP, uh, APAP. Um, as I mentioned before, uh, we we try to, uh, to 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 give more news with the local angle, so uh, we manage to, to to push, you know, to the uh, the the local newspapers, uh, uh, the, uh, the local papers network to to disseminate uh, the uh, our um, our articles. Uh, the news produced uh, in uh, the, uh, has been produced in seven languages. Now we are. Uh, trying to to plan also the the French head of uh, of the French uh, presidency of the European Union Council, and uh, and also the news uh, uh, has been distributed to domestic and international media markets uh, through uh, Team Newswise. So then, uh, finally. <coughs> Let's go back to our <laughs> to this issue of the fight to disinformation. I think you you asked me the right question. I mean, uh, I think because in uh, um, because in this time it's very challenging, you know, to to uh, to to distinguish even for us, even for journalists, it's difficult to distinguish a news w from a fake news because it's, it's a fake news is not a false information. A fake news is a news with uh, more false elements than the true elements. So this is. Uh, th that's that's it. Th this is why it's so difficult to debunk a uh, fake news, uh, because you have some true elements also, you know, uh, and also uh, the, the the social network. The social network is, uh, as you said before, uh, can be a great opportunity, but then on the other side, they can amplify the effect of the fake news, and um, so there is a huge debate about this and about. Uh, also, because we, uh, we as journalists, uh, we as institutions and, um, and organizations, of course, we, we have the perception that we, w that we need to act and we need to react to this very uh, worrying and challenging phenomenon, also because it's, uh, uh, it's undermining our, our democracies, you know, uh, and, uh, and, the, and the debate, because uh, democracies work <laughs> very differently uh, from uh, an authoritarian regime, let's say. So uh, to, have, uh, to have a clean debate is uh, fundamental for, for democracy. Um, the, uh, the tools are, are different, and uh, I, I listen, per this is a personal opinion, so, but I, I listen uh, too often uh, also politicians saying, um, you know, to, uh, that they are proposing also to fine and to sanctions uh, who is spreading fa fake news. I don't know. I, I think it's uh, counterproductive. Uh, I think that we have to straighten uh, the, 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 the traditional, the established media instead of ban a fake news because then, uh, because it's uh, the, the, the line is very tight, you know, to, uh, between the censorship <laughs> and, uh, and the control of the, of the fake news. So we have really to be um, very careful on, uh, on this topic. And, uh, and so that, that is why it's so important in this, uh, in this moment to, uh, to cooperate with the scientific organization as yours, uh, with the institutions in order you know, to have uh, uh, to, to strengthen and to boost the media and the trust of the of the citizens uh, uh, on the media, because otherwise, I think uh, that also the, the the citizens can have the impression that the media. Uh, are kind of um, working on censorship together with the, with the media institutions because it, also the trust to, 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 towards the media is very low in this phase. Uh, so um, if they 
If, I, I don't know, but uh, I think it's if uh, uh, media uh, will try to, I don't know, uh, to will be the only source of, uh, um, I mean, if if you have a difference between official and unofficial uh, news, I think it will be counterproductive in, if you make uh, these uh, this distinctions. Mm -hmm. um, because it, the perception will be uh, that the media are um, like a machine of propaganda. So um, that's why it's so important not to 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 embrace these extreme solutions, but to boost the cooperation with uh, uh, with organization. We have, I mean, the the education also of the journalist. Uh, for example, I read that uh, Le Monde uh, set up a, a team spe specialized on uh, on fake news. For example, uh, in Italy, there there is uh, an, a digital observatory mm -hmm. uh, about the fake news or also uh, as ANSA we run a project on uh, on to debunk fake news also with the, with the help of uh, uh, artificial intelligence so there is not uh, a solution uh, um, but we have uh, different tools and one of these tools is the cooperation with the scientific organization that's for sure very good thank you very much uh, I want to say also about this uh, cooperation that actually it's uh, a pilot thing that we, a pilot action that we are trying to, to do and it works very well for, for us. Uh, mm -hmm. And uh, it works well because we, we're not uh, pushing our content to, to the media. So we're not advertising our content, we, we don't uh, produce advertorials, but actually we leave fr f the freedom to the journalists to select the content that they want, if it fits with uh, their priorities and their agenda, and treat it how, however they want. So we are not interfering with the journalistic, mm -hmm. let's say, work. We're just providing our content and we give them, let's say, the incentives to work with our content and use it as a source for their, uh, for their uh, work. And I think this is a way to, to go forward. As you said, we're providing the platform, we give the means, and then it's the, the role of the journalists to select and decide what can be used and what cannot be used. So we, and we think also that this cooperation with the agency gives us the, the opportunity to localize further our content, which is an issue, especially for, in, for an EU uh, program that we we don't produce content in all the languages, so it's a good opportunity for us to see our content localized uh, and go even to, to regional or, to, or to, to local media. So that works uh, uh, quite uh, well. Uh, I will give the floor to, to the other two panelists if you have any questions or if you want to... Um, I, I really like the, the last point, uh, like cooperating with scientists to mm. debunk fake news or correct false news, because we have been working on a project like that uh, years ago. Uh, it was, uh, um, you may have heard of PolitiFact, it it's a famous US mm. project uh, doing yes. just that, fact checking. So we uh, were you know, following uh, what the members of political class uh, were saying in public, uh, you know, uh, because they should be the first first ones to, to speak uh, honestly, to speak the truth uh, and not mislead the public. So finding some sorts of, uh, of uh, sound bites that included numbers or could be verified, we were cooperating with uh, scientists, you know, because a journalist cannot be an expert on budget issues one day on, on spaceships another and on spatial planning uh, uh, another day. So we were co cooperating with scientists and it was very well received uh, among uh, the general public. Of course, we um, gave them uh, exact instructions as to what um, we expect from them and then uh, taking care of how it would be, uh, you know, publishing uh, the news online. Uh, but yes, that, that proved to be really, really good. But yeah. one difficulty that we, we have, and I would like to discuss here, is that we are not involved in politics. We are debating policies. No, 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 and it was, yeah. And uh, the, the thing is that uh, um, our agenda is a bit broader, let's, uh, mm. let's say. So sometimes to find this link with uh, what is really happening and to use our content for mm. fact-checking, I'm not sure if it goes like straightforward. Mm. So it's, uh, it, it it's on a case by case yes. uh, basis, absolutely. Yes, uh, I, for, I mean, the way we understand it at least is that using scientific content 
in policy making gives you the gives you the the, the opportunity mm -hmm. to produce policies that that are more uh, fact based and well informed and, and you are fighting disinformation let's say through the policy makers exactly. i would say more than like using because there is always a fear that uh, scientific research can be okay maybe it's a heavy word weaponized and we don't want this to to happen so there is also there is always a thing you don't agree. No, well, <laughs> how much can you really do to stop people weaponizing it? Uh, uh, yeah. that, that's kind of out of your hands. Uh, so, I agree with your noble aim there. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't know how much it's in your hands to control that. However, that's yeah. My yeah. that's true. Mm -hmm. That's true. That's true. Yeah. I don't know. Okay, then uh, I will pass the floor to, to John. Okay. Right. Thank you, Nikos. Um, uh, I've I've got. Um, a few short points uh, to, to present, um, more from the point of view of a sort of, I wouldn't class myself as a sort of a standard journalist. Um, I work in quasi-journalistic business, but essentially I'm an EU policy expert who then took to doing journalistic and quasi-journalistic work. Uh, and so maybe that gives me a kind of a seeing this sort of, uh, these things from the kind of other side uh, in some shape or form. Um, up on the slides, you can see the, the, the link there. You can also download these materials. Feel free to use these for whatever purposes uh, that you wish. Um, I have three basic points. I don't have enough time to develop these in, uh, in an enormous amount of depth, but they, they tie very closely into what my two previous speakers uh, uh, have said here. Um, the first is global microbrand. The second is agenda setting, agenda following, and broadcasting and interacting, particularly on social media. And the third is turning facts into stories. And what I've been trying to do with this, these points is take things we've had from earlier in the day uh, in the seminar uh, and to try then to apply those things we've picked up from earlier in the day to draw this together in the communication session uh, at the end. So global microbrand, and what does that basically mean? It essentially says, what can I, as an individual or an expert of some sort, how do I build my own brand? Now, that will be, first of all, by building a strong community of interest on digital tools with what I call my community. So that would be, in uh, scientific communication, that would be, first and foremost, communicating with other scientists and other experts. So am I, among people who are my peers at a professional level, am I trusted to communicate about that? Right? Now, I'm not personally involved in matters which are the same as SBOM's ones on an everyday basis. I'm mostly involved in EU communication, but about the academic aspects of European Union policymaking. So that community is dozens or even hundreds of academic researchers from universities all over Europe who are social scientists dealing with European Union policymaking. Now, within that, there are lawyers, there are statisticians, uh, there are political scientists, there are political economists. And that community, we communicate among each other and we build trust in that community online, all right? predominantly through Twitter in that, um, in that environment. Now, outside, beyond that community, then comes the sort of sometimes interested yep, general public. Now, into that environment, I class people who once in a while might need to hear something about the topics which really, really matter to me. They might not be that interested in what has been said by that politician today about that specific aspect of Brexit. But when it's something really big, once every two months, once every six months, they know, ah, hang on a minute, there's that guy I know there who has that specific knowledge. He's trusted by his community. So those people come to me once in a while and say, OK, I'd be happy to have a comment from you here and now. Right? Now, without the trust in the inner circle, in the community of people who are the real experts, I would not get the attention of that round of the sometimes interested. Right? I've got to be trusted by my peers to mean those people in this one circle further out would then be willing to be trusting me. And what my communication then about Brexit is, is not really a direct communication with the general public, because I can't reach them. Right? I don't have the platform to reach a massive audience myself. Now, I have a reasonable reach on social media, but I am not reaching anything like the scale of audience that a television channel or, or radio station could possibly reach. 
Now, what I'm then doing is if I have trust in my community, those people that are sometimes interested can then actually transmit that message out to a wider general public. So if we take, for example, and apply today's lessons to what's um, uh, from the seminar, um, who are those people for SBON researchers who are in that kind of sometimes interested group? So we had a presentation here earlier on uh, from Frank Bogovich, the A of the Slovenian MEP. He is not going to be interested on an everyday basis of what an SBON researcher does, but once in a while, right, if it's about his topic or if it's about Slovenia, then he could potentially be interested. Another one, uh, to give another Slovenian example, not directly connected uh, today, um, uh, Peter Zijavic, who's, the, um, who's Delo's uh, Brussels correspondent, um, he is someone who I am in commu communications with once in a while if there is something about Brexit which he thinks is relevant to Slovenia. Right? So that is the case where our kind of his Slovenian EU interest and my Brexit EU interest, when they cross, we communicate, and then that would not be the case if I had myself not been able to build up that, that trust in my own network among nerds in the EU Brexit circle uh, to build the trust first and foremost. So what that then means overall, right, as an expert in what you do in your digital communication is what does that mean termed a global microbrand? So what I'm communicating is, or an SBON exp, expert would be communicating, is global in that I can reach those people wherever they are, right? The geography doesn't matter because of the digital communications. It's micro because the total number of people, the actual number of people I'm reaching on an everyday basis is comparatively small. It's public in that I cannot and would not necessarily want to limit the people who would consume the content that I'm producing. Right now, I don't know who most of those people are, and I don't actually really directly have to concern myself with that. Right? I can't necessarily say this person will necessarily consume the content I'm producing. And it's self-directed in that I choose the channels and approaches which are most appropriate to me, where I'm going to reach more of the people who are most important to the communications that I'm doing. So those rules you could pretty well follow as a, a scientific researcher of some sort, uh, building your brand that way. Right? So that's the first point. The second point is agenda setting, agenda following, and broadcasting and interacting. It's not as bad as it sounds, trust me. So, um, Much of the communication that I, can, I consume or I see on an everyday basis from organizations or from experts is a bit like that, right? It's broadcasting agenda setting. It says, we've released this report and it's very important, right? Basically, we're releasing the report today because today is the reason, because in our internal procedures, today was the deadline when we had to put out the report, right? We've got 300 pages in the report, it's full of tremendous information, and today we're putting out, hey world, pay attention to this, right? Now, I kind of understand that, right? That's how organizations work. But what happens if today is not the day that I actually really want to be consuming that, that, that report, right? It's maybe today I'm thinking about something else, and that report that Espon's putting out today is not, is not my prime concern. Right? Now, there are different ways and means that you can do that, or you can build on that and improve it, right? Today's government decision could be better for reasons X, Y, and Z, because actually, six months ago, we had a report that answered that point that today is relevant. Right? Now, you, and for any organization, the best resource in your communication is your people who think, ah, hang on a minute, a few months ago we answered that question, but today the world is talking about it. Mm -hmm. right? Let me give an example from my blog. I've written a lot about the EU budget over the years. Every year there's an EU budget. Every year, the previous year's blog post about the budget, or three years' previous blog post about the budget, again has relevance if I bring it forward at the time when I'm following the agenda that my, my audience wants it. Now, the ones at the bottom then, agenda setting interacting. That's a little bit what we're doing with this event today. We're basically saying we're going to make an event and we're going to bring people to the interaction with us. So maybe, for example, you launch a report and then you do some kind of online Q&A about it with the report authors. So you build a kind of bit of interactivity into what you do. 
And then the one that's the most complicated all is the agenda following interacting. That basically says, this politician said that, and we think it ought to be like this instead. Right? Like, now, that's perhaps getting a bit more political than, than most SBON researchers could potentially do, but that's an ethical point. The challenge is a time-consuming one, uh, and that's what, what um, uh, Natasha said um, uh, earlier on. Broadcasting agenda setting in communications terms, that's quick. Right? We put out our report, done. All right? Agenda following and interacting is really time consuming. You've got to read what everyone else is producing, you've got to follow the agenda, and you've got to be able to potentially intervene within it. But if you manage to do that, that is then how you build your reputation. And then actually, when media wants a story from you, they will then come to you because you've built up that understanding and that community trust at the, when times were quiet, and then they will come to you for a comment, if you're lucky. And then the third point, because I'm aware we're very short on time, I'm going to take one Espon example from this morning's uh, presentations, uh, and I'm going to turn it into a story to show how you can potentially do that uh, uh, as researchers as well. So uh, this is one of the very many maps, indeed, map number 108, about green infrastructure and, um, in uh, different regions of um, uh, Slovenia. And one thing just struck me about this map. Why is there such a light color around Ljubljana? Right? That was, uh, I've looked at the map and thought, why is that? Right? Now, anyone who is a Slovenian perhaps could have a hazard guess uh, as to why that is so. Right? So then I asked the report's author over a cup of coffee, why is that that Ljubljana scores lower than the, than the, the regions around? It has the biggest traffic problems. Uh, that lead to air pollution problems and noise problems. It has the lowest amount of forests of anything else in the region. And uh, it has the biggest problems with invasive species, uh, particularly plants. Right? So those are the actual reasons to explain that map. Right? Now, that is not fake news. Right? That is telling the story to explain the fact, right? Now, that, by telling that story with those pictures, will generate much better social media traction than the map itself, right? It explains the map in visuals. Now, if you then, as a researcher, are capable of telling those sorts of stories in that sort of way, you will get a greater resonance for what you produced in the first place than if you only produced the statistics or only produced the map. Right, that is, uh, those are the images I've used. That's my legal slide. Uh, so then uh, that is all uh, from me for a quick few points uh, which are worth bearing in mind. Uh, if you want to ask any questions about that beyond the time we have today, uh, by all means, tweet me or email me or find me via my website. Uh, um, and I'm happy uh, to do more follow-up than we have in the five minutes remaining. <laughs> Thank you very much, Son. Uh, one quick reaction to what you said. Indeed, it, 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 it's quite more understandable what you presented about uh, Ljubljana. And storytelling is uh, what we all know, that it, it, this is the way to present our information. On the other hand, it contradicts, at least to my mind, with what uh, you, you said before, Natasha, that we need to, to be short, and what you said also, Alessandra, that even a number can work. Mm -hmm. So one with the, the other don't work, because storytelling, actually, it's about using more words. You use three slides instead of one map. So who, how do we combine these two? Where is the...? I would say that you have to keep on... You've got to keep on pursuing what you want to communicate until it almost becomes boring for you to do so. Right? The work, one of the other things I work on very much about railways and sustainable transport, right? I've, I've been slogging away at that, that, that issue for months and months and months with very little traction until suddenly something comes on the news agenda and it turns out that some British journalists had actually been following all along and then called me straight away for a comment. So there are different ways of telling the why is Ljubljana not as green as the area around it, some of which you can tell in video, some of which you can tell in maps, some of which you can tell with photos, some of which you can tell with an interview. You've got to keep on, if you know what you, the aim you want to reach or the story you want to tell, 
experiment and iterate and improve in the way and means that you tell that story. Okay. Right? Now, we are all also different in the way that we consume information, and we're different in terms of where our skills are and what we are best at producing. So I'm quite fine at producing text and still images. I'm pretty horrible at producing audio and video. And so that's where I pursue my own strategy is thinking about that. I don't try and cover all the platforms or all of the techniques. Simply, I'm, I'm, I'm uh, very decisive in saying, OK, this is where my audience is, and these are the skills I have in order to manage to reach them and communicate with them. Thank you. And I don't think it contradicts what I said. It's exactly what I've been telling, you know, with storytelling and putting things in context. It doesn't take a lot of space and a lot of time. It's like, could be your press release and you can put out a tweet with uh, your press release link uh, saying why uh, look at the Slovenian map and uh, how green uh, each part is. Ljubljana is not because of A, B, C, D. Mm -hmm. It's the whole story, you know, and who has uh, the one who has time for five minutes can, you know, talk to experts from one field to another field. The one who has only 30 seconds, Order. that's it. Yeah, <laughs> so thank you. I completely agree. Mm -hmm. It doesn't. It's um, it's not a contradiction. Mm -hmm. The important is that you reach the public audience. So you have to uh, to, to to translate the study in a story, in a picture, in a videos, in a number, in something that is a concrete uh, mm -hmm. things that is uh, understandable by the public. Because the the, the aim of the journalism, uh, the, the journalism in general, is uh, is this one. So. Yeah. Great. So thank you very much. Uh, concluding, I would say that the most important uh, thing as we discussed uh, today is to be concise, to be on time <laughs> and to be uh, cooperative and to have a strategy. So thank you very much for, for uh, all this uh, input. I hope that we will help our community to, <laughs> let's say, to, to communicate better, to, to engage better with, uh, with media. And uh, thank you for your time again. Thank you. Thank you.